Quantum computers exhibit an inherent randomness, so it seems natural to consider them for procedural content generation. In this work, a quantum version of the famous classical wave function collapse algorithm is proposed. Procedural content generation has applications in video games, art, and design, where the need for algorithmically generated content is widespread. Content in this context can therefore have a broad range of meanings. Images, 3D models, game levels, text, sound, or a combination of these, to name just a few examples. For the sake of simplicity but without loss of generality, let's only consider the generation of tile-based images in the following. The tiles of the image constitute the alphabet of the content. These are the basic components it is comprised of. Of course, the goal is to generate images that are not entirely random, but comply to certain rules that are defined by the designer. Using the alphabet and the rules, procedural content generation can therefore be understood as drawing random sample images from a probability distribution of all possible images, where images that violate the rules have a probability of zero to be drawn. To begin with, let's briefly review the original wave function collapse algorithm that has been proposed in 2016. This algorithm is entirely classical and does not involve any quantum computations. The term wave function collapse is borrowed from quantum physics because of the conceptual similarity. The wave function refers to the set of potential states of the tiles, whereas the collapse occurs during the iterative process of narrowing down the possibilities. To explain the algorithm, we can consider a very simple example. The generation of a checkerboard image consisting of dark and bright tiles with simple next-neighbor rules. The algorithm starts with all tiles being undefined. Then, the information entropy of each tile is calculated. The information entropy, for this case with two possible choices, depends on the probability of selecting either of the two choices, dark or bright, for an undefined tile, taking the already defined tiles and the rules into account. It becomes zero if only either a dark or a bright tile can be selected, and one if the probability of selecting a dark or a bright tile is equal. The algorithm chooses the undefined tile with the lowest entropy. If there are several tiles with the same entropy, it chooses one at random. This undefined tile is randomly assigned according to the allowed choices. Then the next iteration starts, and so on. In the case of the 3 times 3 checkerboard image, all tiles are initially undefined and can be assigned a dark or a bright tile with equal probability. Therefore, the entropy for all tiles is 1. Let's presume that in the first iteration, the upper left tile is randomly selected and, randomly, a dark tile is assigned. According to the rules, the neighboring tiles can only be bright now and their entropy, therefore, drops to 0. In the next iteration, one of these tiles is selected at random and assigned a bright tile. This process continues iteratively until all tiles are defined. In the end, two different checkerboard images can be generated with this method that will emerge with the same probability of 50%. This is the basic idea of the classical wave function collapse algorithm. Let's next discuss how the algorithm can be implemented on a quantum computer. A quantum computer is a device that makes use of quantum physical phenomena to perform calculations. For the current work, we consider a gate-based quantum computer that can be used for universal computations. The basic units of information on a quantum computer are qubits in analogy to classical bits. Quantum algorithms on such a device work in three steps. First, the qubits are prepared in a well-controlled initial state. Second, a set of instructions are executed in the form of so-called quantum gates. Third, a measurement is performed. This measurement reveals a bit string, or sequence of bits, one bit for every qubit. As a consequence of quantum physics, this measurement process is inherently random. This means that even under the exact same conditions, the outcome of two runs may differ from each other. Each measurement may reveal a new bit string. The set of instructions determines the distribution from which the bits are drawn. Random sampling is therefore something that procedural content generation and quantum computers have in common. It seems natural to investigate whether the random bit string distribution from a quantum computer can also be used to generate content in the sense of a quantum procedural content generation. This is the motivation for this work. 
in which a specific implementation along the lines of the classical wave function collapse algorithm is considered. To achieve this, content must be encoded as a bit string of suitable length such that each bit string can be interpreted as a content instance. Then, the task is to find the right set of instructions that produce the desired distribution of bit strings for a given set of design rules. The technical details of this approach are explained in the paper, including a pure quantum and a hybrid quantum classical version. The actual quantum mechanical collapse of the wave function is used for the implementation, from which the classical method derived its name. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, feel free to reach out.